Hey guys, it's me, Jess. Um, I haven't made a video in so long. Um, it is a Monday night and I just wanted to do a quick, um, I did a February wrap up. I want to do like a wrap up of all the books that I bought in February because I bought a lot of books, um, mostly used. I don't buy a lot of new books. I did buy a couple this month. I was not good about that this month. But I wanted to talk about them because I'm excited about them and if you know anything about these books, you've read these books, um, please comment down below and it will make me pick them up sooner if I know people have read them or enjoyed them or if I know people out there that are watching my videos have read them, um, I will definitely pick them up a lot quicker. So anyways, let's um, not let me ramble too much because since it's a Monday night, I don't want to have to edit this for forever. So let's just get into it. Um, this is in no particular order. I literally just grabbed them off my shelves, put them on the ground next to me, and we'll talk about them as I pick them up. So the first one I bought, um, I can't remember where, I think I found this at, there's a, um, thrift store called, oh crap. I live in California in the Central Valley. And there's a bookstore in the Bay Area that I drive, like I, sometimes I drive about, um, 30 minutes if I don't hit traffic to, because it's the only thrift store in my area that has a giant, um, book section because the Goodwill and stuff like that have teeny, teeny, tiny book sections in my area. So I think I found this at that, um, thrift store that I can't remember the name of, um, so, and it was like, it was one of those situations where you know when you're like really wanting to read a book and you almost buy it brand new, but you go and then you find it right after at a used bookstore and it's like the universe is aligned and it's meant to be. It's the book I'm talking about in this situation is The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. And I don't know. Oh, okay. So what made me want to read this was, um, I think the it's a book series of three so far and the third one just came out called Columns of Fire and I saw it in Barnes and Noble and I've been really trying to expand what like my tastes and my experience my reading experience so I picked it up based on the cover read the back and sat down with it at a Barnes and Noble to read it not knowing it was part of a series and a woman next to me was like oh my gosh have you read the first one I love that series and I was like the first one and I was like dang it I can't read it so I was gonna check it out at my library the first one or buy the first one at Barnes and Noble and I was like uh eh, I'll just I'll just leave with something else and it just wasn't meant to be obviously then I went to I think it's called Savers the thrift store and I found this used at Savers which is their books are super cheap um this is about a a um, monk that is trying to build the greatest gothic cathedral in the world. Um, and also a mason who is the architect of the cathedral. An elusive lady, Elena, haunted by a secret shame. And a struggle between good and evil that will turn church against state and brother against brother. And I have no idea why I'm so excited to read this because I couldn't even tell you what genre it is. I couldn't even tell you what about that makes it sound interesting. Um, first of all, I love that it's ginormous. Um, <laughs> I love that his pictures. I love that it takes place in the 1100s. Um, I love that it's, I, I think it can be summed up that I love that it is so far out of my taste and I think at the time I was taking a music theory class and it really ended up being a music history class and I found it, <clears throat> I'm trying not to say interesting five million times like I do in my other videos, but I did find it really interesting in that class um, about the cathedral and the monks and um, how they would pass along the Catholic hymns by memorization. 
and it was made for the cathedrals like the cathedrals architecture was made specifically for the vocal like amplification or the acoustics or whatever i'm trying to sound so educated right now when i this was like seven months ago i took that class and i remember almost nothing but i think i found this in that time and i was like yes i need this it's beautiful it's chunky it's floppy i will read this eventually but i ended up finding it in february so first book i bought in february or first book whatever anyways who cares second book i bought for my library um my library has like a teeny tiny little section where you can buy books for literally a quarter to a dollar and it's just like an honor system drop the money in a box um take your book and <laughs> i think people hate this book i think people hate all of these books i think they started off like really charming and funny and now like there's a couple out and they're kind of stupid but i couldn't help it and that is pride and prejudice and zombies <laughs> by jane austen and seth graham smith it's a quirk classic there's a couple like there's a couple other ones in the series what are they let's see if it says um no cool it doesn't say there's a lot of really good illustrations in this um i think that's supposed to be elizabeth <laughs> okay I bought this because, first of all, I love Pride and Prejudice. I read Pride and Prejudice. I read a really cool annotated version of it that you can still buy at Barnes & Noble. Um, probably, in, I think it definitely was in 2018, I think it was mid-2018, that I immediately watched all the television adaptations. Fell in love with it even more. Um, it's currently the only Jane Austen I've ever read. And this was really popular when I was in middle school. That's probably telling you how literally how much of a fetus I am but um but I and my friend was a huge like collected these like the zombie fad while I was in middle school was so real um like the peak of the zombie fad she had this I really wanted it <laughs> but I hadn't read Pride and, Prejud Pride and Prejudice and I feel like that's just you can't read Pride Prejudice and Zombies before you read Pride and Prejudice that who are you so I finally read Pride and Prejudice. This is a quarter. It has a lot of middle school nostalgia. It looks absolutely ridiculous. And for that reason, I am totally hooked. <laughs> um, let me show you. Like, for real. <laughs> what even? <laughs> I bought this definitely for kicks. Will I read it? Yeah. Eventually. Will I enjoy it? Maybe not. I don't know. Also, the quote on the back, <laughs> if you know Pride and Prejudice, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a zombie in possession of brains must be in want of more brains, which is a reference to the opening line or so of Pride and, Preju Pride and Prejudice. It's, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a man in possession of money must be in want of a wife type of thing um i don't know i like it whatever anyways moving on though so, i'm just realizing how different those two books are <laughs> my reading tastes also okay so i bought a deb debut i think i bought two debuts this month wow i did good usually i only read backlist like of my whole life i only read backlisted books it's fine whatever i bought black leopard red wolf um which is a fantasy by marlon james um that came out this month and it is a fantasy with a little bit of like african mythology um a little bit of history i think um it's about a man named Tracker. You know, he's like your typical I only work alone um, type of guy. He ends up working with a group of people when he's hired to find this like mysterious boy who disappears. Um, and from what I understand, a lot of 
people are trying to hunt down Tracker and the people he's working with to get them to not find the boy. So it raises a lot of questions like, who is he? Why is he so important? Why is it so important that he's not found? Why did he go missing? Um, and the I think the what really sold me, besides the cover, was that it is drawing from African history and mythology. Yes, please. Like, I'm all about mythology right now. If you watched my other videos, I've only really dived into Greek mythology. So all about this. I have not started this yet. I tried to start it and it, first of all, it's very different than I expected. And so I put it down so that I could give it a fair chance when, now that I know what it, what it's like when I'm ready for it, when I'm in the mood for it. So I did put this down. I'm going to pick it up later. Right now I'm working my way through the Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire series and I don't really like reading other fantasies at the same time. So I'll pick this up eventually. Um, but I was really happy to um, kind of like support a Black author during Black History Month and buy a debut, not debut, what's it called when it, it like when you buy a book when it first comes out, you know? So that was cool. Go me. Spend that coin that I shouldn't be spending. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, okay, this book was a gift for Valentine's Day for my boyfriend. I was like, I just want books. I don't want nothing else. Probably food and books. That'd be cool. So I got Cersei by Madeline Miller. Um, this is about Cersei. Um daughter of Helios. I think it is basically just a retelling of her story, of her myth, which I know nothing about. Um, like I said uh, in my other videos, <laughs> shouldn't be too hard to find. There's only like three of them. Um, I really like mythology. I read Percy Jackson. All of a sudden I really like mythology. I read Bridge, Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak, which has a lot of the Odyssey in it. Like, I don't know why mythology, classical mythology, keeps popping up in my reads recently, but I'm down for it. I'm ready to keep going. I have not picked this up yet because I have so many books to read for school, but I will. This is like one of my top five books to pick up next. Okay, next one. I bought this at my favorite used bookstore ever in the downtown area where I live. I love supporting like used bookstores or indie bookstores. I'm all about it. Probably more used bookstores than indie bookstores that sell brand new books because I am broke. So, um, I really like this bookstore because they have a really good buyback program that doesn't put them out of business but also like encourages you to bring the books and stock their shelves and keep shopping there and it's like a good it's a good thing they got going it's like you can only trade in like a, a brown paper bag worth of books at once and they'll buy them so whatever ones they want from you and then when you go to use your store credit you can only use so much like you can only use how does it work it's like, I have a bookmark around here somewhere that has their hours and their program, which is really smart. But anyways, that you can apply like 50% of the book's price in store credit. So you end up only buying, paying 50% of the book out of pocket. And they price their books at either like 52% if it's a new book or like 49% if it's a used book, which love that. But anyways... Also, I don't know if those numbers are right. It's a little bit more than half it's a, if it's a new book. It's like, if it's a used book, I screwed this up. If it's a used book, then it's a little more than half. If it's a brand new book, then it's a little bit less than the cover price. It's like a couple dollars less than the cover price. Which is like, down? I don't know. Okay, anyways, this has been on my TBR forever. I got White Oleander by Janet Fitch. Um... It is about uh, Ingrid, who is a poet imprisoned for murder, and her daughter Astrid, who 
um, goes through a series of Los Angeles foster homes, each its own universe with its own laws, its own dangers, its own hard lessons to be learned. And it is a redeeming and surprising journey of self-discovery. So this is part of Oprah's book club, <laughs> if anyone was wondering. This sounds amazing to me. First of all, Astrid, I mean Ingrid, a brilliant, brilliant poet imprisoned for murder. Okay, yeah. Why? <laughs> and then two, her daughter Astrid and how that affected her daughter's life. It's like, I don't know. Like, this just sounded really interesting to me. I, again, haven't picked it up. Um, I just read a really interesting part on accident. Um, <laughs> anyways, I guess this was her debut novel. Um, it has really good blurbs. This was, why was this published? 1999. Told you. I told you. I hardly ever read new books. Um, what else did I pick up? Okay, so I bought, I did my first purchase through, um, thrift books this month. And let me tell you what, it was weird as hell. Okay, so I bought two books. I think I paid $11 total. And <coughs> I bought, okay, so if you're not, if you don't know what thrift books is, it's kind of like an Amazon of used books. Um, it's super cheap. You can buy based on condition. You don't really buy based on format. They kind of just say, you know, it's either new, like new, very good, good, poor, something like that. They've got a whole scale of you know, condition, and then it'll tell you based on the condition you choose what the format is. So I usually, when I was looking through the website, I specifically was looking for very good to like new. And the very good ones are actually very reasonably priced. And the first book that I bought was Wonder Boys by Michael Chabon, based on a recommendation from, not personally to me, but a recommendation by Marcus Zusak, to read the book and I was like yeah it's a book about authors that that's all I know about it I can't give you a blurb because the book that was supposedly in very good condition has no dust jacket <laughs> some very concerning stains it's had a rough life it really has book one book two <laughs> was based on the same thing also in a video my um a video interview of Marcus Zusak, another book he mentioned that was something to read was um, What's Eating Gilbert Grape by Peter Hedges. I haven't even seen this movie, so like, what am I doing with my life? But it's an advanced reader's copy. They sent me an arc of What's Eating Gilbert Gra Grape. What the heck? This arc is older than me. <laughs> Yikes, this arc is from 1991, September of 1991. I was born November of 95, so I feel pretty lucky to have this in my hands, first of all. Second of all, I feel pretty weird that I paid for this. <laughs> so like, I mean, I emailed them and I was like, hey, I bought a copy of this book. You sent me a, an arc that's unfinished copy, like uncorrected proof, illegal to sell. Uh, what do I do? And they ended up just like giving me my money back because I didn't have any other copies. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this because I don't know how different this is from the book that was published, first of all. And second of all, I don't want, like taking that into account, I don't want this to be my first experience of the story. Like I've never watched the movie, I've never read the book. And if this is super, if this is, I mean, what arc is super different, but if this is different, I don't want it to be my first experience with it, but it's really cool that I have an arc of such, I feel like it's an iconic movie. I don't know about the book, but I don't know, dude. I have nothing to tell you except for those are the books I bought on thrift books and that was my experience and moving on. Um, I bought a book from Amazon, which I hate doing, but 
I did it because <laughs> I couldn't find it anywhere else. And that is The Odyssey by Homer. And I specifically bought the edition translated by Emily Wilson. Because again, Marcus Zusak, whose word is gold to me, said that this was a great translation. It was very accessible, very un easy to understand. I'm completely unfamiliar with the Odyssey. And like I said earlier, the Odyssey was really important in Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak that I just recently read and fell in love with. So this is now my shelves. It's so pretty. It's got um, deckled edges and these, what are these called? Dutch flats. I love it. I don't think I even paid that much for this. I definitely did not pay the cover price of $18.95. So that's good news. Um, yeah. Haven't read that yet, but uh, I want to. Okay. Let's go to another really old book. <laughs> um, this is for school. I had to buy this for school. This is 1984 by George Orwell. I bought the copy. <laughs> I bought the copy that has eyeballs as the 1984. Can you see that? Um, it's just a copy from Amazon. Um, published by Berkeley. Um, <clears throat> I have to read this for my intro to lit class that I have to take um, and write about. And he recommends a book that was not written in the last 20 years because we need to provide all this evidence, yada, yada, yada. So I picked, he's like, it's a great opportunity for you to read a book you've always wanted to read, but can't get yourself to. <laughs> like, I feel like this is very applicable. I feel like This will be a great, I really just feel like it would be a great thing to write a paper on in this, in 2019. And there's no shortage of opinions or, uh, what's, what I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? I will have plenty of ease finding sources for this book. Anyways, moving on. All I know about this is about Big Brother, Big Brother is always watching. That's all I know. Literally all I know. Who am I? I don't know. Did my high school ever make us read classics? No. Was it a real high school? Kind of. Um, I'm saving the best for last. Let's see. Okay, so actually these are like the three best. The three best covers. Um, also at the bookstore downtown, I bought a new copy of, um, Dune by Frank Herbert. I've also never read this before. It was a classic like sci-fi masterpiece um, that I know very very little about and I kind of want to keep it that way. I don't like to go like books that are notorious I don't really like to go in knowing what they're about. I kind of just like to go in and feel it out as if I'm reading it when it first came out and I haven't done any research about it. And I this is like a mass market but like for example it's it's just a little bit taller than a mass market um and it's really like it's a lot floppier than a normal mass market so I found this edition I think these covers just came out or something but I bought it immediately from that store so like for example the cover price is $10.99 and it's brand new and they sold it for $8.80 so not bad what am I gonna complain about I'm like a mass market that's not ten dollars. Cool. Um, I know this is like deserty. I know it's a sci-fi. I know that when I opened the book, it has my name in it. It has Jessica in it, and I took that as a sign and I bought it. Also, let me print something really weird about this edition. There's like misprints. So, for example, okay. So I was flipping through and I saw this weird zigzag, and I was like. Hmm, I hope I'm not missing words. I'm not, that's cool, I'm totally fine. But like, what? <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this. It's just like cut off halfway and like they printed it on the two pages. 
as if it were one. So now it's just like blank. And it happens multiple times. And I actually love it. Like I think it makes it really unique. I'm not mad. It doesn't get in the way of me reading it or so I think. I don't know. It happens a couple different times in the book. I'm really excited to get to this. I've always been curious about it. I found a really cute copy, which is gonna motivate me to read it. Moving on. It's only it's already 25 minutes. Okay. Okay, so then I bought another debut, another fatty, The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I haven't read any of her other books. I have not read that series that people keep talking about. What is it? The Bone Season. I have not read that at all. All I know is this is a giant book. First of all, it has a dragon on the cover. One of my favorite things to read about. Second of all, I've heard it is about dragon riders. Sold. Um, third of all, I just have a soft spot for thickies. What can I say? Um, something, you know, when you see a book and you're just like, ooh, I'm getting good vibes. I'm getting like exciting feelings from this. It's my favorite color. Like, I, <laughs> cut, cut. Uh, it's my favorite color. I love dragons. I love dragon riders. I'm coming off of a Game of Thrones hype. I have a problem with fantasy and thick books. I don't know why I love thick books. I love mammoths, like over 800 pages. Something about it, like I, you spend so much time in a long book that you come to live in it and I am all about that. Um, so I bought this immediately because number one, I'm not gonna lie, I bought it because of the hype. And then number two, it was the first book I've ever pre-ordered. Milestone. Um, it sounds like a great premise. Uh, I want to be on the train of people that read this at like when it first comes out. I haven't picked it up yet. I have one more book in A Song of Ice and Fire. All I have to do is read A Dance with Dragons and I'm ready to pick this honker up. But like I said, I don't want to read any fantasy at the same time as A Song of Ice and Fire because I just want to plow through. If I read other stuff at the same time, it's not that I'll get confused. I'll just like procrastinate. And I'm trying to meet my goal of finishing A Dance with Dragons before April 14th when season whatever of Game of Thrones comes out. I know it's not going to be the same, but my brain won't let me not do it that way. So the last book. All right, please don't slaughter me for telling you that I have never read, written, I have never read Lord of the Rings. I hadn't even watched the movies up until January 1st of 2018. I literally, New Year's Eve, I spent the entire time watching the second and third Lord of the Rings movies. And I have no regrets. I love Lord of the Rings now. I'm so about it. However, uh, we don't even go there. I've never wrote, <laughs> you point to say I've never written the books. I've never read the books. I've really wanted to. It's just been a sense of like motivating myself to do it. I'm scared that because I have watched the movies I'm not going to be compelled to get through the books um I'm not thinking about that too much because I'm not gonna let myself do that I tried to pick up the first book I could not make it through the first chapter because I was falling asleep it was just a bad time to read it I was tired put it down returned it to my library however I'm not letting myself give up I'm not letting myself not read Lord of the Rings who am I so I bought this beautiful edition of Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. R. Tolkien. 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 Please help me not be a noob. The 50th anniversary one volume edition. I think this is like the second release of the 50th anniversary edition. Okay, let me tell you what made me buy this. First of all, this is my boyfriend's favorite series. 
mostly because it's the last series he ever read in his life. He does not read books anymore. Trust me, I'm working on it. But he read these when he was in like, I swear to, he claims he was in fourth grade when he read these, which, what? But um, he is the biggest fan of these books. And it is so disappointing for me to not, like, how can I not have read the only series my boyfriend has read? Like, I love books and reading. I need to read the one thing I can discuss with my boyfriend. So, I am determined to get through this beautiful edition of all three books in one bind up, which as I understand is like the original intent of the format. It was just like, it's written to be one book, but it's published in three different books. Um, this has like those super like, can you hear that? Plasticky pages. Um, it's super floppy. It's super heavy, I'm not going to lie. Um, however, this is an amazing copy. I'm so impressed. Because in the back of the book, guys, it has different appendixes for the world. Um, excuse my lay terms, because I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to tell you, I am so... Like, world building is my number one when it comes to books, fantasies. And right now, I am just so blown away. And so, like, how did I not know this? But I'm just really impressed about the world building <laughs> in these books. Like, the line of dwarves. Family tree of dwarves of Erebor as it was set out by... Gimli Gwoin's son for King Elisar. Like, what? Okay, sure. I'll eat it up. Like, let me find something else. Um, yes. Like, this is all I've been looking for in my life, and I never knew it was there. It has an index to different things discussed in the books. Like, is this my new Bible? Maybe. We'll find out. All I know is I'm literally in love with this copy. And it looks beautiful on a bookshelf. Like. I, I'm sure people are watching. I'm sure you're watching this. If you have read those books. And you've read them a long time ago. And you've known this all along. I'm sure you're laughing at me. But like. I am being mind blown. By what I never knew existed. And you are watching that. You are watching my first experience with this book. I. As soon as I finish. I, As soon as I finish Song of Ice and Fire. I have lots of plans to. Start the Lord of the Rings. Um, and Priory of the Orange Tree. And then I will start Dune. And then I will. You know make my way through the Odyssey. And not have a life. It's fine. It's fine. Books are my life. Anyways, those are all the books that I bought in February. Don't get used to it. I don't spend money on books. I don't let myself spend money on books. I use my library. But I am really on that like new booktuber first end of the month all the video possibilities hype. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking through this. Thanks for dealing with me. Um, I've literally been talking so fast and so long I'm out of breath. I just get so excited. Um, anyways, I will see you in my next video. Thank you guys. Bye.